Good morning. That light's amazing, isn't it? Endlessly going, endlessly. Other people love to be out watching the sunrise. Just a marvel every morning. There's that little lady concerned about her cheeks. And I still haven't learned her language. And what she's really trying to say to me. Can you hear her clearly? Her chirping. She wants me over there, I think. That she's trying to draw any predator to her to be the victim, but actually she's taking us away from where the chicks really are. Very astute little bird. Oops, that's me. So people, this is our last Galilee morning, most probably, unless plans get really turned upside down for a while, because today I'm going to get to Jerusalem, God willing, this evening, and, or this evening later, and then uh, tomorrow off to early morning, off to London for my wonderful aunt's farewell in this life. She passed away about a month ago on a special uh, funeral mass at her convent in, uh, in Surrey. On Monday evening, the, the reception of her remains and on Tuesday morning, the burial mass. And our family has been so enriched by this 94-year-old who spent 57 years in Nigeria. And a number of cousins are coming from Ireland and then it's three years since I was home, so I will be visiting home, uh, visiting my family, seeing my first grand niece. I don't have a grand nephew yet. God willing, that day will also come. And that's the plan. So then I will be in Ireland until the 13th of June, God willing, and hopefully get back here then. So you might get surprising little posts. <coughs> That's my intention, my hope. Let's see what happens, what will be possible, what we can deliver <laughs> with these wonderful tools of communication. So that's the plan. So now you know what's up. I'm not sure if I'll catch something in Jerusalem in the morning before I go to the airport or maybe on the way to the airport. So putting all this in, in God's hands. And today we're here in Magdala with the readings for the seventh Sunday of Easter, which is, uh, what's going on here? Something strange. Okay, there we are. Hold on there. Oh, I see what the problem is. Because today in some place in the world, they're celebrating the Ascension, which we celebrated on Thursday, 40 days after Easter. And then, uh, because of the facility for people to go to Mass on Sundays, then it's the feast, the celebration of the feast is transferred to this Sunday in, in some places.
So we have really, with our Lord going to heaven today, being celebrated in so many places, and we did it on Thursday, the readings reflect this new moment. And a reading is a little bit surprising that's in here today, maybe for us. In a way, it's a little bit surprising thematically, but it's there for a very good reason. And it's the martyrdom of Stephen. And it's here, uh, obviously each moment of this has its own great value, but it's here especially because of Stephen's vision of our Lord in glory at the right hand of the Father. So that continues the theme of the Ascension, our Lord seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. And so this is the whole arc really of creation where we go back to Genesis and God created the world and, and humankind and then all the, the ups and downs of human history, which we still experience today in real time. Cain and Abel, and Towers of Babel, or Babel, and, and all the rest, the building of culture and civilization, the struggles of survival, the conflicts on earth, on the family level, right through to the international, intercontinental level. Humankind learning, trying to learn to live together. What a big, big scenario, a big theater. object of great contemplation and then God comes to save us. Some people say, well, the scriptures are filled with phrases about the Messiah bringing peace. So there's no peace, so there was no Messiah. And quite a few people use this reasoning. It's interesting. So you can ask a very good question. If the Messiah comes, how is he going to accomplish peace? Is he going to accomplish peace with military means, with rockets, with a big treaty over a cup of coffee? How is he going to do it? <coughs> An alternative way would be to win hearts, to win hearts through humility, through forgiveness, through reconciliation, tr through a humble peace that's won with great reduction of egos, downsizing of our personal justice demands vis-a-vis uh, -vis the other, a complete renewal of heart, a heart of flesh, a heart of mercy, a heart of gentleness. So that's the second way he could do it. And how long will that process take to win each heart? Families who have issues with children know the challenge it is to bring back a child from drug addiction to extract them gently and without doing harm from very downgrading circles of acquaintances. To rebuild broken lives, broken hearts, broken relationships. It takes time. And to mend humanity, to mend our world. What patience. And then we could ask, this Messiah who has 
gone to the extent of being born as a little baby, of sharing our whole path. What more could he have done between Bethlehem and Calvary and the Ascension? What more could he have done? What different could he have done to teach? Could there be a better teacher, a more patient heart of mercy, of renewal? And now he's seated at the right hand of the Father with so many faithful followers, and Stephen is one of them, who as he dies says, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. Reflecting faithfully the light received from Calvary. Father, forgive them. They know not what they are doing. Do not hold this sin against them. And one that was there was also a fanatic, because religious fanaticism drives people to things just like ambitious fanaticism and military fanaticism, political fanaticism, drive people to extremes. And there was Saul consenting to this murder out of religious fanaticism, which needs to be redeemed as well. And sure enough, he was redeemed on the way to Damascus, which is just straight across in front of us. And after Paul, so many. And yet so many disciples of Jesus, take, we take so long to learn his ways. Really our whole lifetime, that's why we're here on earth. What different could the Messiah do to win hearts for reconciliation and renewal and self-giving and service? To go to faraway places to bring goodness or just right beside me in the kitchen to bring goodness. Not everybody has to go like my aunt to Nigeria for 57 years. What a life. Doing goodness in our kitchens, at the office, at the coffee machine, at the bus stop. And there we see waiting for us in glory in the second reading promise I am coming soon with recompense to give to each according to his deeds. There we see Stephen entering glory. We see the psalm saying the Lord is king the most high over all the earth. All the battles rage. All the selfishness has its heyday of destruction. But all the redemptive love is being poured out. As we read in the gospel, so incredible. John chapter 17 is a marvelous prayer. It's called the priestly prayer of Christ. And we see that intimate conversation with the Father. And the main subject of the conversation The main subject of the conversation he's having is us, that we can be one, that we can be reconciled, that we can know love, that we can be redeemed. I wish that where I am, they also may be with me. That they may see my glory that you gave me because you love me before the foundation of the world. They know you sent me. I made known to them your name and I will make it known that the love with which you love me may be in them and I in them. What an incredible Synthesis of the purpose of salvation. Today is a day of great contemplation of the entire mystery of salvation. A day for our hearts to be filled with compassion for a world that's so brutally self-destructing. So many societies so deeply hurting each other. So 
so in need of this mercy and goodness. People, God bless you on this beautiful Sunday and this new week, on this first day of the week. See you later, alligators. Who knows where, who knows when. The Lord knows he has us in his hands. Our life is fragile. We wake up one morning, we don't know what's going to happen at the end of the day. We go to sleep, we don't know what's going to be in the morning. We trust, we believe, we hope, we love, we serve. What a way to live. We console and dry tears. Thank you all. God bless you.